this tournament the last two years, and somebody is about to send somebody else home once again. The top seed, Oklahoma, the five seed, UCLA. About half an hour ago, the Bruins handed the Sooners just their third loss of the season. We're here today against Oklahoma. It's happened eight times in the 40-year history of this tournament that a team has swept a semifinal doubleheader to advance to the finals. It happened for both teams in last year's champ series. And away we go. First pitch a ball to Jada Coleman. She led things off for the Sooners earlier today with a home run in her first at bat. Coleman followed by Jocelyn Allo and T.R.A. Jennings. Of course, we love talking strategy. UCLA and, and Kelly Inouye Perez deciding to stay with Azevedo, who was the reliever in that earlier game, and not go back to the starter, Megan Faremo, who obviously would be available if need be in this game. Azevedo did a, a better job in just keeping away from the barrels. We saw the biggest hits hit against Faremo. It's that velocity, once you can catch up to it, she's up in the zone. Very well see her again this game, but it's how they complement each other. One down off speed, the other one up higher, higher speeds. That's Vito, by the way, has not lost in the postseason, and Coleman with the leadoff walk for the Sooners. Bruins scored first in the first game, never lost the lead. Can the Sooners get something cooking? They have been dynamite in the first inning of games this season. As Jocelyn Allo steps in with her 118 career home runs, flirting with that 500 batting average on the season. Watch her look in. That's been the spot they've started her off. Obviously, she didn't want to bite there. A little bit up and in for strike one, but they have been consistent with how they start off the greatest hitter here in college softball. And I'm curious to these big boppers if they're sitting change first time through. Alo hit a two-run home run on Saturday against Texas. One of the more remarkable statistics of her career, she is averaging a home run every five plate appearances. Can you say somebody's due for a home run after they've only, they just hit one a couple days ago? <laughs> when it's her, yes. Yes. She was one for three earlier. And Azevedo got one of the biggest strikeouts of the tournament, if not the biggest when Jocelyn came to the plate as the tying run. Allo, looking for the gap, and she'll find it. The one bounce into the base of the wall. Coleman will be held at third, and two in scoring position for OU. Double for Allo. Well, Allo's gonna hit a changeup. I think she was looking for this all along. It's an outside pitch. That's the pitch she actually yeah. struck out on in the first game. This one, it's low. She goes down and get, and Pola and Brady a little bit slow getting to this ball in the gap when it was elevated up. I thought someone was gonna get underneath of it, but it gets down a big double for Oklahoma. They're in business here in the top of the first. And it's the first time today they have had runners in scoring position. All their home runs earlier were bombs. Two on for Tiari Jennings, the first team All-American. A couple of flyouts and a strikeout in the earlier game. She has two home runs here at the World Series.
on the season, a crazy 537 average with runners in scoring position. Walking a double. And the first challenge for Holly. One and two. Jennings gets a hold of one. Blasts it deep and out of here. Three run home run. This is what they do. The long ball, the power that they get, especially guys with two strikes. I mean, this pitch down in the zone, but in that zone, the Tiara Jennings looking for, sitting on, inside corner at the knees, and she knew it. Throwing that bat down. The response for Oklahoma right here, top of the first, the three spot. Sooners jump in front, three at bats. Three runs in, and the quick visit from Lisa Fernandez out to Holly Acevedo. And that is home run number 145 for this booming Sooner team. Two last game, one this game. They are <laughs> continuing to score via the long ball. Sooner fans are loving it, and they've grabbed the lead here in the winner go home game on this semifinal Monday. A lead for Hope Troutwine to work with. Question now is how big? Lions skies it, Perez under it. One down. Let's watch Tiari tee off again. And well, that's just a pitch that <laughs> Tiare just gets all over. She can feel Garcia underneath her on that inside pitch. It's in the river. She just barrels it up and drives it out. And again, that's one of those pitches where Azevedo is ahead at a 1-2 count, and it still leaves the yard. It is an absolute slugfest. Sixth home run in the last eight innings for these two clubs. And look at what they continue to do in the first inning of games. Wow. Message sent by the top seed that they would not go quietly. And a reminder of how difficult it is to try and beat them back to back. No one has ever beaten them twice in the same day in their World Series history. Dating back to 2000 and their first national championship season. But I love what Patty Gasso talked to Holly Rowe about. No panic. You know, they lost their first game last year here at the World Series fought their way back into the championship, lost game one of the champ series, and then fought their way to win games two and three to win the title. Left fielder Alyssa Brito. Tiari Jennings, by the way, three home runs now in four World Series games. Burrito, Hines coming on, got it. 
The record, by the way, Jocelyn Allo hit four last year to tie it in a single World Series. Oh, Jennings, that's her 27th of the year. Just continues to climb up. Two down for Lindsay Elam. She gets the start behind the plate today. Snow stays at first, so Kinsey Hansen out of the lineup. Potential pinch hitter or defensive replacement later. They have two All-America caliber backstops at Oklahoma. Look out, Holly. Acevedo comes back to get the strikeout, but damage done, and Oklahoma, Kinsley Washington to lead things off. Of course, as the game gets underway, you realize that uh, some players out there like Kinsley, Bree Perez, Delaney Wiz, the top three in the batting order here, might be their final game as a Bruin. Fighting to play at least one more day. Winner is on to the champ series. A date with either Oklahoma State or Texas. One of those two teams tonight on the brink of going to the Champ Series for the first time in school history. I guess it's only fitting that, uh, you know, we've had the Blue Bloods here, the former champs, four of them. But we also had four teams here trying to win their first national championship, and it's going to be Blue Blood versus Newbie starting on Wednesday night, regardless of the outcomes. And it just feels like it was going to be that type of year. All the depth throughout the country, the success of a lot of programs, the number of upsets and unseated teams. Trent Wine opens up with the strikeout, one down. So Troutline has that really good rise ball at the top of the zone, but she can also throw this. It's a little bit of a screw ball that's going to move away from the lefties into the righties. Expanding that strike zone gets Washington to swing through it. Bree Perez, fifth year out of Martinez, California. She and her sister Kylie, they've been penciled into the Bruins lineup card for the last eight years running. They had one season together. Remarkable stretch, the two sisters with over 600 combined hits in their Bruin careers. And Bree a part of that 2019 title team. Those are some Good numbers right there. Over 500 games at UCLA. The hits, 376 wins. And they've touched home plate an awful lot. So much experience out there, championship winners on both sides. Hope Troutline, though, is new to this stage. Transferred in so she could have a moment like this. Said, I knew about the high standard here. I've watched Oklahoma over the years. And when I decided to transfer, I wanted to be a part of this pitching staff with Nicole May and Jordy Ball. Best ERA in the country for her and the team. 
at the start of this World Series. Patty Gasso talking strategy with Nicole May if uh, they need some more of her. She got the start earlier, took the loss. Perez, left field, Brito back. And it's out of her glove, the miscue for Oklahoma. And Perez slides in safe at second. Mistimed her jump out there in left field. It's also the route that she took. Melissa Brito went straight to her left. Watch, watch her route. She's going to go to her left, then realizes it's up over her head. By that point, she's backpedaling. Wants to start backpedaling. It's such a difficult catch to make. The angle there, not the most direct one. Of course, it's hard off the bat. But the first three steps are the most important. They will score that a double for Brie Perez. Runner in scoring position now for Delaney Wiz. She has been their most productive bat in terms of RBI in the postseason. She also led the way during the regular season and a chance for the Bruins to get one or two back. She can also bop it. She did in the first inning earlier today. Uh, that could be trouble. On comes Boone. And the legs to make the catch. Two down. You can see a lot of balls in the air. With Hope Trotwine on the mound. In the circle, she's going to be predominantly rise ball. We talked about it. So the outfield's going to get a lot of action out there. Of course, here comes Maya Brady. She said some balls in the air, two of them that have left the yard, game one. She'll get way back in the box, too, against Trout Wine. Left foot on the chalk. <laughs> Woo, she says. Buzzing the tower, moving her back. Didn't need that bruise. <sighs> Well, and that's why you throw in at the upper body to really lean the hitter back, and then oh, you. Oh, now Michelle Smith, you would never corner. have thrown a pitch like that in your career. <laughs> Radio balls. <laughs> you can you can see them. And you you can't see them. You can hear them. Ah, <laughs> they buzz the tower. Our Olympic gold medalist. One and two. Got her. Two strikeouts to start out for Hope Troutwine has not given up more than four runs in an appearance this season, but uh, the Sooners were able to pop her for three in that first with the Jennings three-run home run after a Coleman walk and an Alo double. So Azevedo to face seven, eight, and nine here in the second. Winner is into the finals, which will get underway Wednesday night. Best two out of three. Oklahoma State and Texas, the other semifinal tonight on ESPN at 7 Eastern. <laughs> Bottom three in the lineup did not get a hit in the first game earlier today. They went 0 for 9. Trying to work that drop ball in the inside corner. Two two pitch to Snow. And a base hit for Talon.
Well, that's the same pitch. That's a drop ball, but they move to the outside corner, and Taylor Snow is just going to go down and get it. So it's got a little bit of out, so it's, it's down. It's got a little screwball spin to it. And Snow is just going to pound it right back up the middle, gets it past Fury Perez, leadoff base hit. First hit of this Women's College World Series for Taylor. You may remember her toughness from a year ago when she had that finger injury sliding into third base that kind of went all crooked on her. Taped her up, got right back out there, continued to play through the pain to help them win the championship. Boone's going to try and move her over, and she will. And the throw pulled Washington off the base. Boone is safe at first. I don't even know if the throw did it. It's like she pulled herself off the bag because Riley Boone was getting down the line. That angle, she needed to come to the outside of the bag because that's where the throw ends up being. Crosses her up. She pulled herself off. The throw is there. Yeah. She keeps her foot on the bag. I, it still might have been close. Yeah. Ninth bunt hit of the year for Boone. And so after they went over in the first game, Snow and Boone started out two for two here at the bottom of the order, and it's Jana Johns. Talking with Patty Gasso now in her 28th season with the Sooners, five national championships, trying to get to the championship series for the seventh time in 10 years. It's been quite the decade of dominance for OU. Harkens back to the, uh, the heyday of the 80s for UCLA, the 90s for Arizona. And do we already have a pitching change here? because Pola is coming out. Lauren Carter is going to right. That usually signifies Megan Faremo will be coming in. And here she comes out of the bullpen. Short leash when the season is at stake. Azevedo will depart. Faremo comes on with two aboard for Oklahoma here in the second. Your mission, stand up to moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis and take it on with Rinvoke. Rinvoke, a once daily pill, can dramatically improve symptoms. Rinvoke helps tame pain, stiffness, swelling, and for some, Rinvoke can even significantly reduce RA fatigue. That's Rinvoke relief. With RA, your overactive immune system attacks your joints. Rinvoke regulates it to help stop the attack. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Talk to your rheumatologist about Rinvoke Relief. Rinvoke, make it your mission. Learn how AbbVie could help you save on Rinvoke. Pitching change for UCLA. They're down 3 0, and the Sooners are threatening again here in the second. It's Megan Faremo, who was the game one starter, will now come on to relieve Holly Azevedo. Couple on with nobody out for the junior out of Oceanside, California. She'll face the nine hitter, Janet Johns. Faremo, a lot of power, a couple of appearances, 172 pitches. A little different mix than Holly Acevedo. Just the one inning, three hits, the three earned runs, the TRA Jennings, three run home run. John's thinking sacrifice here. Jana in the opener on Thursday. Grand slam off of Northwestern. One of two in the game. Jennings also had one. The first in Oklahoma World Series history, as a matter of fact. And 
Could not put it down, 0-2. I think when you're run ruling teams and you have such an advantage from the get go as Oklahoma has, they're not getting a lot of opportunities throughout the regular season to lay down bunts. They've only bunted three times all season. In early games with no outs. They've already matched their hit total from the game earlier. They've got four of them. This is an Oklahoma team that scouts their opponents very well. They make adjustments from pitch to pitch. So you know from game one to game two, they were absolutely talking with JT Gasso on what pitches they were going to be hunting, especially off of Haley Acevedo, the, the starter, and now off of Megan Faremo. You got to... Faremo comes on to get the strikeout one down. And that'll bring up the top of the order. Faremo can throw a, a changeup as well. Not as well known for it as as Avedo, but she is going to need to use this today. Again, it's also a flip change, and with her velocity differential in the high 60s, dropping that one down into the 50s, it's going to be a pitch she'll need to use here against the Sooners. Jada Coleman walked back in the first. Hey, you you got to get a lot in in that uh, 30 minutes between games. That's yeah. all you get. So you got to figure out who's going to be pitching. You got to talk strategy at the plate. Apparently, you got to get uh, you got to yeah. get some food in. Now we know where Mendoza was yes. between games. That is the uh, back okay. of the OU dugout. Oh, did you guys want one? <laughs> My bad. That's some foot longs. Now, this is our girl right here. Get the onions out of there. Get everything. Oh, she's like taking the cheese, the, cheese, Even the, the lettuce. Cheese. Are we just eating bread? I think <laughs> she wants the she wants a grand salami. That's what she wants. Let's see what she did there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got the meats. There's the one one pitch. Jada has been on base in uh, three of her four plate appearances. Not only the home run, but a couple of walks. Lofted it out to Kelly Gooden. Two down, and here comes Jocelyn Allo. Double the right center, went the opposite way her first time up and came in to score on the Jennings HR. And remember, Acevedo really attacked her in. And that was kind of the game plan against Allo. Imagine with Megan Fremo, not only is it going to be upstairs, but they're trying to get off barrel. Where they came inside, Jocelyn Allo does a perfect job. Look how her front foot stays open. She's ready. She's turning on this pitch, ready for this pitch. You can't attack these hitters the same way each time. Why? Because they adjust. When was the last time we've seen a ball, by the way, hit this high and far? And how about her calling the fans? Bring it. I got to three more. Three run shot in the first for Jennings, and now a three run shot in the second for Allo. And it's amazing, they absolutely know what they're hunting. There's no hesitation on that. Yeah. With that home run, by the way, number 119, she tacks on three more RBI and has now moved to third all time in NCAA history, passing Laura Espinosa.
31st of the year. Her third season at OU with 30 plus homers. No one's ever had three seasons like that. And Jennings peppers one out to right. This has got to be quite a collection. The home run ball going to Jocelyn Allo's parents. <laughs> That's another member of the Allo clan. Levi and Renee are parents. Uh, I think they've run out of hands at this point. <laughs> well, so proud of her Hawaiian heritage, Polynesian descent. Loves carrying that flag. The record-breaking home run when she became the all-time queen, she was able to do back home and was choked up, addressing all of her fans out there, talking about the opportunities for any little girl from the islands to chase the same dreams that she has. And how about her calling the fans? I mean, talk about someone who knows the home run trot because she's been there before so many times and she's rounding second. Just go ahead and let's get loud, Oklahoma. She came around to home. Yeah, 119 trips around the bases. I wonder how many miles that is. <laughs> yep. Bring them. Bring it. I got you. What'd you say, trophy hunting? Yeah, trophy hunting indeed. She's got just about every personal one in her case and now trying to get a second national championship trophy with the Sooners. <laughs> Levi leading the chance, a boomer. Sooner. Boy, they really didn't skip a beat after they lost. Took a body shot earlier today in the first game of the semifinals. And boy, have they responded. And when you talk about, Jess, you referenced it, they're the biggest thing in sports right now. She's probably the biggest athlete in sports right now. You talk about domination by the GOATs. Three of the top 15 home run seasons of all time. Jordan, three of the top 18 scoring seasons in the NBA. Tom Brady, three passing touchdown seasons, and the Babe, four of the top 26 home run seasons. Allo is right there with him. And she may be helping Oklahoma to play at least two more days in the best two out of three champ series, which will get underway Wednesday night. It's also just being ready for a pitch. I mean, we give them so much credit for the result, but it's it's the point before getting into the batter's box of what they're looking for, what they're prepared for, and honestly, what they're hunting. Lions, Perez, Vines beating Jennings to the base. Six nothing Sooners. This was earlier after the Jennings home run to her teammates. Alo says five. That's all we're going to need today. Five innings. And she delivers. Doing her part with the deepest drive of the World Series. And a six nothing sooner takeoff. For the bracket, has 17 national championships. The bottom, they're still looking for their first. And Jocelyn Alo absolutely wailed on that pitch sent it deep three run home run and they are indeed working on a big crooked number through the first couple of innings uh, okay and i'm the math in the booth so um 119 home 119 runs home runs How? times times 240 feet is 28,560 feet Divided by just trotting on just her, trotting. Runs in uh, her career. Correct. 
pop up left side, Jana Johns, as we go back to Professor Smith for the mileage on her home run trots in her career. So that's 28,560 feet divided by 5,280 feet in a mile. That's 5.4 miles. Five, Five miles. Four miles of home run. We have confirmation from our guys at 643. That is correct, Smith. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Over five miles of home run trotting for Alo. We're lucky enough to have Smitty in the booth with us. If you don't have that luxury, <laughs> get 643, folks. <laughs> They've been teaming up with us this postseason. They're here at the World Series. All kinds of goodies. Even for an English major like me, <laughs> I can appreciate the figures. One down for Savvy Pola. Pola, out to center, Jada Coleman. Let's go down to Holly Rowe. Well, Hope Trotwine is a fascinating story for Oklahoma softball. She was pitching at North Texas in 2020. She had a 21 strikeout, no hitter. And that season also played against Oklahoma and got the win. That caught the eye of Patty Gasso. And her dad, Paul, told me that they really were kind of intrigued when they went into the portal and Oklahoma had seen her. She was very flattered she could move up from North Texas to Oklahoma softball. But uh, they were very impressed when they saw her and they faced her at North Texas. Yeah, Patty's going into the portal now the last few years. So uh, they got Paige Lowry from Missouri. They got G. Juarez from Arizona State and now Hope Troutwine. Those other two were parts of national championship teams. Last year, G was the MOP, went 5-0 and at the World Series. Troutwine trying to get to 3-0 and today. how much they've had to rely on are the last three weeks, the absence of Jordy Ball. She's playing kind of more of a background role. Now, I'd say she has definitely been the ace of this staff ever since the injury to Jordy Ball. I remember last year she had that perfect, perfect game where she had the perfect game of 21 consecutive outs, but it was all strikeouts, 21 strikeouts. So that'll put you on the radar for anybody. <laughs> I had a frame over here, one, two. <laughs> well, if you UCLA, now you just got to try and collect yourselves and chip away. Two and two. A pair of three run home runs. Tiare Jennings, Jocelyn Allo. 26 games in a row with a home run. And as Faremo chases the rise in a six nothing lead. We showed you earlier, talking about five innings, they would love to end this early, get out of the heat, get some rest. The new format here at the Women's College World Series does give the teams a day off tomorrow before the championship series. Something new this year. Brito, Elam, and Snow. Do up for the Sooners. Well, with the new format as well, Beth, you know, this is the if necessary game now, there's 30 minutes after. So there are a couple of different changes. Last year, if there was a if necessary, there was about a four hour break. The other side of the bracket would play their first game and and then the if necessaries would take place in the evening. 
I think most softball players and fans like this way better. Absolutely. You want to get right back at it. Well, it was an opportunity for UCLA in this instance to be able to start Haleasa Vito, who had just finished throwing at the end of game one. So different schools of thought on it, but yeah, I mean, for myself as a player, when I used to, I'd rather go right back to back. Not uncommon in softball growing up and into travel ball or play all weekend long, double headers and yep. triple headers. And I think the thing that still just sticks out the most though is just how quickly Oklahoma can continue to make the adjustments. And a strikeout for, for Ramo. Holly Rose got uh, the Allo family with her, Holly. Well, I've got nieces, nephews, cousins, and dad. And dad, I wanted to talk to you. Is that the farthest home run you've ever seen Jocelyn hit? Um, no, I think the one against Alabama was further than that. Okay, unofficially, we think that was further. You guys had to put a lot of work in. How many balls would she hit per day to get that kind of eye at the plate? Uh, when she was young, she was hitting 1,000 balls a day. You know, just, just we'd go do a couple buckets, pick them all up, do it again and again. And she just wanted to keep on doing it, so we kept doing it, you know? Your family would also save about $10,000 a year so you could fly to California and go to travel ball. How has that sacrifice from your whole family really paid off for to her? To tell you the truth, I don't know how I did it. We made it happen. Like, we're not, we don't have a lot of money by any means, but we make it happen, and it was a great sacrifice for us, and she's reaping the benefits, and it's been a fun ride. I wouldn't do it any other way. She's really giving back to her community. I know you guys are trying to start some other teams in Honolulu and Hawaii, where you're from. Tell us how she's giving back to her community. You know, she, she just has a lot of love for Hawaii, and she wants to have Hawaii kids be showcased. And um, me, every time I see a coach and I talk to them, I always try and bring up, hey, I got a kid from Hawaii. Let's get a kid from Hawaii here. Let's get a kid from Hawaii here, you know? All right. Well, we hope that this is a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we have sure enjoyed covering your daughter, and thank you so much. Thank you, Holly. Thanks, Levi. Nice to meet you guys. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty cool, too, that uh, that's part of Jocelyn's NIL deal that she has teamed up with the university. So the Owls get to wear her face on their shirts, their sweatshirts. And Elam flies out, two down. Somebody got a depth charged size drink right there. You come to the uh, World Series, they don't mess around. They don't mess around. They're like small buckets. <laughs> I love all the family too that's here to support her. We see so much family come to Oklahoma City. Not an easy distance to travel. One, two, three inning for the Bruins. Can they get something going? Down a six spot. And all three reach the national semis. Oh, that one hit the ground first before Johns got to it. The effort though, yeah. See the ball in the air, it's like bees on honey. Watch this thing, go get it. Nice try, try to sell it too. <laughs> gotta do it, gotta do it. I mean, she did catch it, just bounce first. Doing her best, Odyssey Alexander slash Jesse Warren. <laughs> Gotta see one of those. Jesse's was in fair territory. Odyssey's slide was right around the same place, I think, diving for that pop up last year at the World Series. Jesse, a few years ago, went uh, catch for the double play for Florida State. I mean, the tag of runner is Odyssey. Yeah. Too. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome plays oh. defensively. Seen some robbed home runs. One, two to Vines. Two and two. Winner of this one to face the winner of Oklahoma State and Texas. So the only three teams left here are the only three that have beaten Oklahoma this year. That's right. <laughs> well, and I guess well deserving to be in this position. Yeah. Oh. 
And another strikeout for Troutwine, one down. That's her fourth. And we'll remind you that the Women's College World Series Championship Series. Wednesday night is game one, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Game two on Thursday night, game three if necessary on Friday night. For more information, go to NCAA.com. It's your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Troutline continues to be very good on the corners. So she's got that movement, but she's also been really good at just her positioning of where she's placing those rise balls. Oh. Like that, that last pitch right there, just the, the, the spot at where she's getting that ball into the zone and then running away from it. So look how quick this is gonna get through the strike zone and then the swing and miss by Goodness, she just waves at it. This is more screwball than rise ball. Three in a row for Hope Troutwine, two down. And continuing to expand the strike zone, she does it in a number of different ways. This is the screwballs, the setup, so she expands the zone, moving toward the right-handed batter's box. Now she goes up. So the setup is the screwball, and the strikeout is the rise ball up in the zone. You see the miss, too, how much below the ball these barrels are. That's what tells you everything, is the plane you decide as a hitter to put your bat on, and then when you're missing by four or five inches, that's the movement. Or a little different vibe over there <laughs> right now for Patty Gasso than earlier today when they fell behind in the first inning and were no never able to catch up. Sooners have turned the tables here with a three-run first and a three-run second. Former star Sydney Romero talking with Alo. She won a couple of national championships. Boy, Romero and Shea Knighton, whew, were they a doozy of a combo in 16 and 17. Alyssa Brito on the run. Back to back, one, two, three innings. All oh, Sooners. Holly's got Kelly. Oklahoma has been the team to beat, however, over the last uh, decade. Riley Boone, Janet Johns, and then the top of the order. A three-run home run, Tiare Jennings in the first. Three-run home run, Jocelyn Allo in the second. Remo to first, one down. Hey, it's game four of the uh, Stanley Cup Eastern Conference Finals. Rangers and the Lightning game four Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN New York leading Tampa 2-1. to one. Be the Thunder. <laughs> I hear that all the time in Tampa Bay. Be the Thunder. They've had some awfully good success. Of yeah. Them. Rangers are what? Since 1994, the days of Mark Messier? Yep, yep. And uh, for the Lightning, they're trying to three-peat. Perez battling with the Sun. Got it, two down. Jada Coleman walked and scored in the first, a fly out in the second. Jocelyn Allo on deck here for the Sooners. Two for two in the ball game. Ball. Here we go. 
Well, and it's interesting with Allo coming up, you know, you go back to that inning. Oklahoma had two consecutive base hits off of Acevedo, and then Faramo got two quick outs. It looked like she might have been able to get out of the inning. First pitch swinging. That all changed with Allo. Yep. When you know what pitch you're going to get. You only get by these Oklahoma Sooners so many times. Yeah. The tough part is obviously making good pitches, not making mistakes, yep. but also not being predictable. Jocelyn Allo knew she was going to get something inside. And the walk will bring up Allo with two down. Back Jocelyn Allo, all five of her bats, first pitch inside to watch her front foot, see how open it is. What that does is it clears her hands to get Barrel to that ball. This is a pitch she had been struggling with. She doesn't struggle with a whole lot, but she knew she was expecting keeping that front side open so that her hands could get to that ball, and boy, did it. Two hits, two runs scored, that three-run home run in her last at-bat. Boy, she and Jennings have been a terrific combo. There is the launch. Bruins were hoping that would go foul because that went a long, long way out of the ballpark. One, one. Already the discipline. Jocelyn Allo, she's just so smart. So she knows she hits the home run on an inside elevated pitch. They go outside first pitch here for the strike. They come back inside to that same spot, but a non-competitive strike. She doesn't bite at it. She lets it go. Another base hit up the middle. It goes. Misplayed by Brady. And they will wave the runner home. Throw to the plate. Not in time. The slide in safe for Jada Coleman. And Alo gets all the way around to third. And this again is just how good Oklahoma hitters are, specifically Jocelyn Alo at that 500 batting average. It's not just the power, it's the ability to ground. This is a change up. On a 1-1 count, she's gonna drive this back up the middle, a little bit of a bobble out in Center field by Brady, and that's all it takes for Jada Coleman with all that speed at first base to come around. So they're going to score it as a base hit and an E8. Play it, play it as Coleman coming all the way around. Good slide by Jada to get in there. Three hits for Allo. And now Jennings will try to match that with a home run and a single. Just a fabulous combo since they moved Tiare right behind Jocelyn with the speed of Coleman in front. So many good pitches to look at, RBIs to provide. When you talk about Knighton and Romero, Shea and Sid, they're big hitters from their back-to-back -back championships in 16 and 17. Allo and Jennings doing similar damage and even more. Well, and how much that's helped Jocelyn Allo. I mean, that's something that I feel like when you look back and you see the complete career of Tiari Jennings when she's through, we're going to understand that these are two of some of the greatest hitters we've seen back to back, which has forced a lot of teams to throw to Jocelyn Allo. Jennings with a nice career count as just a sophomore. I think the question will be, well, who protect her her next two years? Yeah. As she has protected Jocelyn. Allo at third is a big run because that would bring the eight-run rule into play and would mean that UCLA would only have six outs left to work with. Carter. Got it. And that eighth run stranded, but another one in off the bat of Jocelyn Allo. 
you said it before the game, this team is resilient. How do you see Hope Troutwine coming in and really pitching great here with the shutout? Yeah, this pitching staff has been just a really great team within a team. And she wanted to pick up Nicole May and Jordy. And so I, I wouldn't expect anything less from Hope right now. What goes through your mind when you see Jocelyn Allo crush balls like that? And we see her whole family here in the stands, people from Hawaii just cheering her on. I think everybody knows, I mean, she's the best hitter that I've seen in softball, and that's saying a lot because I've seen some great ones. But I think Jocelyn Nalo has changed this sport to where people want to come out and watch Jocelyn Nalo swing. So as much as all these great games and everything, just seeing Jocelyn Nalo alone is what people pay for. So it's kind of cool to say that. Thank you, Coach. You Here's Delaney Wiz. Boy, and Troutline is, I mean, she's been consecutive sitting down the Bruins. You could go back and say Perez's hit that got away from Brito. She almost could be throwing a no-no. Yep. Five flyouts, five Ks. And that was borderline error. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah. Efficient with her pitch count, just 42 pitches here in the fourth inning. Well, and like what Patty was saying, I mean, Nicole May, we saw the look on her face when she came out of the game earlier today and knowing that the amount of runs she had given up, Jordy Ball come, comes in. He's up a 3-1 shot to Maya Brady. Just sitting down with Hope Troutwine. They, the three of them, right, the staff within the staff that Patty talked about, and they said, man, Hope, because they, they kind of had nicknames for each, but they're saying Hope is kind of our, our heart, our smile. They mentioned a little bit of sass. <laughs> the fire, the ice. Yeah. yeah, Jordy for sure was the fire. Nicole was the ice. How much they support each other. You don't see that all the time. Smitty, you know that. Mm -hmm. I've always said that, you know, the pitching staff, a pitching staff that gets along typically means there's going to be great chemistry on the team, and you've got to be able to have each other's backs. Yeah, it was hope was the sass and the spark. That's what they said. Each with their own superhero. Superpower. Boy, a nice uh, shout out from Patty Gasso. That JJ on her visor for the late great Joan Joyce. One of the, when we talk about Title IX, one of the true trailblazers in women's softball, women's athletics. Fly out, two down. Let's send it down to Holly. Well, guys, we're seeing Jocelyn Allo gear all through the stadium, and I love that athletic director Joe Castiglione worked with the Allo family to license it through OU so she can use Oklahoma messaging and logos. It's a really cool thing that helps the school, helps her and her family. And Maya Brady also able to take advantage of this name, image, and, like, name, image, and likeness change. She's got great sponsors. She's got a two-year deal, two year deal with Champion. She's in a commercial with the very famous singer, Saweetie. Like, these women are rocking it. And, and as women who haven't gotten paid much all of these years through their endorsements after softball, it's just really cool to see these young people capitalizing it now while they're in college at the height of their fame. Well, and the brand's understanding how important it is, how strong, and how many young girls look up to them. Well, and Holly, you were there at the uh, women's final four. I, I believe it was five, uh, three of the top five that have social media followings were women's basketball players over the guys. And it's great to see in soccer and volleyball, gymnastics, and softball players getting a chance. And on the 50th anniversary of Title IX and the year that Joan Joyce passes away, the JJ on Coach Gasso's visor, it did almost come full circle, right? The, yep. the Joan Joyce's of the world who were a huge part of our sport that helped the sport continue to grow through the 60s and 70s. And now here we are you know, in 2022, athletes being able to make a living, to make, make a living and make some money off of uh, their own branding. 
Well, you know, too, it's great. All the support, the attention that they're getting from the professional male athletes. Yep. I mean, so many Major League Baseball players are, are watching. They got the games on in the clubhouse here at the Women's College World Series. Of course, Maya's Uncle Tom Brady, you know, he's watching. Giving her a shout out for her two home run game earlier to first game. Here's Grace Lyons, again flirting with the run rule. If they get one across here, UCLA would be down to its final at bat of the season. Lions, Brito, and Elam do up. 0 for 2 today for Grace. Ball. Some of these older players like Lions, it would be a third straight trip to the championship series. And a chance to go back to back. And that hits her. And I think with the caliber of this Oklahoma team, there's the expectation of playing in the championship series. You see this is a screwball that just gets away. And you, I think that Grace started to squint, squint yeah. before it hit her. That never feels good. One on for Brito. Alyssa's is 0 for 2. Struck out on a changeup in the third. Patty Gasso calls it the championship mindset. And it has worked effectively ever since their first title back in 2000. When they do such a good job with just the perspective within the expectation, right? The especially even their own fans that are, you know, rabid that want them to just win every single game and every pitch and every inning. Obviously, you, you expect to do that, but it's it's hard to actually physically do it. <laughs> and they have. I mean, that's the amazing part of it. Daughter of a single mom, Janet, grew up in Southern California where she played softball at Long Beach and then started her coaching career at Long Beach City College before making the jump to Norman in 1995, pursuing a career she always wanted to be a part of. Reached, uh, reached the pinnacle for the first time in 2000. And then Patty was telling us the other day, then it became all about softball and all about winning and the obsession actually kind of brought her down. And there was a stretch where she wasn't happy, and the team, as a result, wasn't as successful. And then when Patty said she found the right perspective, the balance, life, family, her strong faith, and of course, a powerhouse softball team, you put all those together, and they started coming back to the Women's College World Series. She gets to coach alongside her son. Her other son is also in the business. And for the last decade, lights out. And I thought it was great, too, what she said about her sons, that at one point she had contemplating maybe leaving coaching, and, and her sons were like, Mom, but we're, we're a part of softball. We're, you don't need to leave softball to be more involved with us because we're involved with softball. And I, I thought that was great. It was almost freedom for her to really dive into the game and stay in the game and because it's a family affair. JT's wife, Andrea Harrison, great softball player for UCLA, ironically enough, as Brito gets a base hit. And that'll push that eighth run now into scoring position. Another two strike hit for the Oklahoma Sooners, and this one middle left on a platter for Brito, who had been fouling off a lot of pitches on the inner half and takes this one kind of inside outs it. Drives it hard up the middle. Yeah, it's supposed to be a curveball that just doesn't get out of the zone. Oh, 
pitching for Oklahoma. Number nine, Kinsey Hansen. I guess there's been some social media chatter. Where, where is Alo now on the all-time RBI list? She, of course, is number one all-time in home runs. She just jumped over Laura Espinoza to number three at 317. Arizona's Leah Bratz, 322. ESPN's own Jenny Dalton Hill, 328. As Hansen loads him up for the Sooners. A hit batter and a couple of singles. Hansen getting a pitch on the inside corner is just going to drive that through the 5-6 hole. Doing her job as a pinch hitter. And I think they might get uh, an opportunity here to get Lauren Shaw now into the game. From one crafty lefty to another, Smitty. <laughs> She's got that lefty run, so a curve screw and a drop, a great changeup. And she's got a couple lefties here in snow. Well, excuse me. No, we don't. Got we a have pinch a hitter. Pinch in. hitter in, and um, so immediately you put the lefty in, and Oklahoma counters with the righty. It's Grace Green. Yep. So Grace Green hitting for Snow, and then uh, Riley Boone. Grace has a chance to put Oklahoma into run rule territory here and force UCLA into their final at bat in the bottom half of the inning. They have 39 run rule wins. And they are in run rule territory. Eight nothing OU. Grace Green, RBI, scores the other Grace, Lions. This is a curveball on the inside corner, and you can just see the way that Green is set up. This Oklahoma team hits the inside pitch so well because they are so far off of the plate that anything that tries to get inside, they just bash right back up the middle. Big RBI for Grace Green. Another run coming in. Riley Boone, they're going to try and get a second, and they will. Sooners pouring it on. How about Jocelyn Allo early this game? Beth, you pointed it out. She said, hey, we're only going five innings today because this is how Oklahoma responds. 39 of their wins this year have been run rule wins because when they get their backs against the wall like they did, especially losing earlier today, you knew they were going to come out with a big response in a 10 spot already here in the fifth. Three in the first, three more in the second, a run in the fourth, and now another three spot for the 10-0 lead. Here's Jana Johns. The run rule thing, though, is crazy. I mean, yeah, 39 run rules, even if it's even if you're playing, you know, just to the fifth inning, as they get another base hit from Johns. That's 78 innings lost. That's 10 games. The equivalent of 10 games of playing time that they've lost out on because they've been so good. No other team has more than 20 run rule wins. If they do that here, they'll have double. Yep. 
that of any other team in NCAA softball. Bases are loaded for Jada Coleman. Well, it's amazing as we talk about how good they are and how many runs per game they average. Can you imagine if they had two more innings mm. to put runs up? How many runs Which has per added games? up. Exactly. Actually, Smitty, if you want to do some quick math, that would be 78 innings time where they do average nine runs a game. Yeah, so about an inning, a, a run and a half an inning, let's estimate. So that would be <laughs> another three runs times... I just like watching 40 games, yeah. so that's another 120, 120 runs. Oh. Craziness. That is pretty good math, Bimo. She's trying to keep up. <laughs> I'm just watching a tennis match right now. I was told there'd be no. <laughs> the Sooners are on their feet, and they are loving it right now. As my good buddy Mark Twain likes to say, Smitty, don't let your education get in the way of your learning. <laughs> I could give you an Einstein quote. Make it simple, but no simpler. There you go. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you that. Twain to Einstein. There you go. Um, that's really how you have to play the game of softball. Simplify it, right? Don't make it harder than it is. Still nobody out. Three runs in, bases are loaded. And that'll walk in another. And now Holly Acevedo got up out of the dugout. And she will head to the bullpen. Holly, one of the seniors at this may be their final game. Bree Perez, Kinsley Washington, Delaney Wiz. Two run sing er, uh, RBI single for Tail and Snow, the two run single for Riley Boone. And now Coleman walks a run in, and you got to deal with Jocelyn Allo again. A double, a home run, and a single. Uh oh. Don't do it. Coming up with the bases loaded. beat the Sooners in the 2019 championship series. Then last year, the Sooners knocked the Bruins out in an elimination game here last year. And now after UCLA forces the if necessary, Sooners might run rule them out of town. On the immediate response too, it was the first pitch of this game. Jada Coleman firing up her team, getting on base, and Allo with the double, Jennings with the home run. Jocelyn Allo, number one, 20 of her career is a grand slam.
series for Sooner hitters. And for Jocelyn, the second of the day. As she goes deep. Just have a day. Four for four, two home runs. She's got seven ribbies. That's just this game alone. And it's on a changeup. I mean, change up, rise ball, screw ball. She's hit them all. Every part of the field. Big smiles for Alo and Gasso and the Sooners, 15 to nothing. And we will take a break with the pitching change for UCLA. Holly Azevedo will come back into the game with nobody out here in the top of the fifth. And we've talked about it throughout this tournament. How important to avoid the big inning. Wow. They now in their three game, four games have an eight run inning, a seven run inning, and a six run inning. And there's number 120 for Alo and Levi, her dad. What do they do with all the cell phones? That's the real question. Wow. Tiare Jennings, two for three. Let's go down to Holly. Okay, I promise I'll find out before the next game where all those softballs go, 120. <laughs> but I do know this, she has won two National Player of the Year trophies. She won another one just a few days ago, and she has given both of those to her dad, Levi. So those are at his house. All right. Well, and ironically enough, those trophies are now in the, the form of Lisa Fernandez, who's the assistant coach at UCLA. Fabulous. That is so cool. Yeah. They didn't have that. Mm -mm. Specific award when she was playing, otherwise, yep. I think she would have won at least two herself. Well, you know what? There should be more courts named after women, more stadiums named after women, more statues out front of ballparks. One down. Let's take a look at the Capital One rewarding performance and seven ribbies ties the single game record here at the World Series. A pitch on the inside corner that she just destroys. And then how about a changeup for the Grand Slam? Seven RBIs, four for four on the day, a double, a three run home run, a single, and a Grand Salami. Not a bad day. I'd take it, yeah. I'd take that in a career or a month or a well. <laughs> <laughs> For Alo, her third home run of this World Series. Remember last year in the Champ Series, she hit home runs in games two and three to propel them to the title. Yep. Lions out in front of the change. I also think it's such a great reminder of a response to failure. I mean, it feels like a long time ago now, but it was only an hour and a half ago that Jocelyn Allo struck out against Holly Acevedo and what really was the difference in the game, that at bat, striking out, coming back to the dugout, you could see the frustration, but then the turnaround, the quickness of putting that, flushing it, and then learning and adjusting, knowing how they would pitch her and having that this game follow up on that. And so many players let that failure consume them because it happens even to the best. Two down. A reminder, too, that she doesn't just show up at the ballpark. I mean, none of these players do on either side the film study that goes into it, the time in the batting cages, the conversations with your teammates, with your coaches, the preparation that goes into this is extraordinary. Yeah, guaranteed she's already talking about not only these at bats, but what JT Gasso, their hitting coach, saw and, and just learning. She's not gonna just sit back and be like, well, I two home runs and seven RBIs, I'm good. <laughs> 
How do you get better, even from there? Well, you know, what do you got? What do you got to get ready for with Kelly Maxwell, and what do you got get ready for with Haley Dolcini? Those will be the two aces, yeah. whether it's Texas or Oklahoma State. Yeah, no, no secrets. I mean, they all know each other from the Big Twelve. The fact that Maxwell looks coming at you from the left side yep. with what? Uh, Curveball, changeup, a little bit of everything. I mean, and and that's you know, Dolcini is going to live on the arm side of the plate a lot of times, and with that screwball. They're both going to come in. Yeah, it's Kelly from the left side to Jocelyn. Well, you know, and, and that's always the adjustments. It's always that cat and mouse game of the pitch calling as well and, you know, the comfort level being committed to a pitch and executing it, throwing to the hitter, not always to the plate, depending on what the the count is, what the umpire's zone is. And there are just flat-out times that you... You go after hitters, and there's times that you don't, and you make someone else do the job. An eight-run explosion here in the fifth. Yep. Finally comes to an end for the UCLA Bruins and then in the second game. And OU three outs away from making the championship an all Big 12 affair. And they will await the winner of tonight's semifinal, Texas and Oklahoma State. We'll get underway on Wednesday night. Alyssa Garcia, Savvy Pola, and Megan Faramo are the ones due up. Let's see who comes to the plate. Bruins still bringing the energy over there in that dugout. Gotta love to see it. Troutwine has allowed just one hit and a controversial one at that. Otherwise, she would be looking at the potential for a perfect five inning game. Lions trying to make the play over, not in time. And that one would have busted up the no no, anyways. Did you see that? Tiari Jennings tossed it. Yes. <laughs> The Lions. And look at, you know they've been practicing this. I was going to say, they said just like we practiced. Yeah, yeah. So Tiari Jennings is going to go way up the middle from the second base position. She knows she's not going to be able to make the throw. Lions is already in position. She tosses it to Lions. So take a look. The toss to Lions, the throw to first, just not in time. Garcia, lefty. If she'd have been a righty, that may have been an out. <laughs> and a base hit for Garcia. Here we go, Paula! Here's the base Coming to the plate. Tessa Malaulu is on the run there at first. Grab, and that's why you bring your glove to the ball.
Savvy will be back for more next year. Faramo returns. Maya Brady. Of course, they'll get the injured Aaliyah Jordan back for a seventh season after they lost her to an ACL early this year. Fielders have a lot of fun. The defense that Oklahoma has had doesn't get talked about enough, but the bond, those two. I <laughs> love that they just hugged it out at the end, too, like almost. Oh. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, they had the play prior to, but they tried to combine for one out together, and then that one, they get it done. as Texas gets loose in one of the backfields for their semifinal showdown tonight on ESPN at 7 Eastern with Oklahoma State. year at the Women's College World Series, Oklahoma scored 49 runs. They are already at 48 right now without even getting to the Champ Series yet. They've had seven home runs and a dominating performance in the circle for Hope Troutwine trying to go 3-0 here in Oklahoma City. Fly ball, Boone back at the wall. Ball game, Oklahoma. Will play Wednesday in game one of the finals for a chance at a sixth national championship. How about the response? And we've talked about it throughout the season. The offense, and that's exactly what they needed to come do. What did they do it in a big way? And it was from the first <laughs> inning on. A 15 spot. I love that Jocelyn Allo, not only the performance, but her calling it and telling her team, hey, let's go five. Let's go ahead and run rule and get this deal sealed. Well, and Hope Troutline just showing that she is the ace of this team with Jordy Ball being injured over the last month. Hope Troutline getting it done. And just loving how her offense has been able to put up so many runs. Jocelyn Allo just continues to get better every single day of her career. Ups in front. 